Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here with another episode of Why I Love This Lens. Today I'm going to talk about the Fujifilm XF 90mm f2. I love long lenses, and I always have. There's just something so cool about being able to bring your subjects in up close and pinning them tack sharp against a nice soft blurry background. Throughout my career, my long lens of choice has traditionally been those fast 2.8 telephoto zoom lenses, like my old Nikon 80-200. And now I'm using the Fujifilm 50 to 140 f2.8, and that's this guy right here. When you're photographing action and sports, portraits, anything in low light, nothing beats that kind of speed, and of course nothing beats razor sharp glass. However, as we all know, long lenses come with some trade offs. If you want to go lightweight, you're going to sacrifice quality and speed. And if you want both of those things back, you're going to be carrying around some pretty heavy camera gear. This kind of weight issue might not be a big deal if you're shooting short photo assignments or shooting close to home. But if you're out traveling or adventuring with your telephoto lens, it really starts to weigh you down. I say this from experience. I've hauled my big f2.8 telephoto zooms everywhere. I've carted them in the backcountry in multi-day trips. Uh, I've skied with them. I've hiked with them. I even hauled one over the highest road in the world for a month in the Himalayas during my 2001 bike tour in Ladakh, India. It hasn't always been the ideal piece of gear to lug around on these kinds of trips but I've done it anyway because I've wanted that quality. Then a few years ago I tried the Fujifilm XF 90mm f2 lens. And the moment I slapped it on my X-T1 and put the camera up to my eye, my life changed instantly. I suddenly saw my future and it weighed a whole lot less. In fact, the very first words that flew out of my mouth when I looked through this lens was, this is the one. Fuji's 90mm f2 is a medium length fast aperture prime that gives you that classic telephoto look and perspective without the added weight and bulk of a bigger telephoto zoom. It was designed to match the viewpoint of that ultra classic 135mm f2 lens and so it excels at giving you razor sharp subjects against wonderfully soft blurry backgrounds. This makes it ideal for shooting portraits especially since it gives you a comfortable working distance from your subject. It's hardly a one trick pony though. The Fuji 90 is one versatile lens. With its fast f2 aperture it's great for shooting in low light or when you want a really shallow depth of field behind your subject. It also has incredibly fast autofocus, which makes it great for sports and action and adventure. Its compact size and weight make the 90 an incredible travel lens, and it's ideal for carting into the backcountry and using on multi-day trips. One of the first things I did with my 90 was take it on a month-long cycling trip through Romania. I'd been thinking about taking the 50 to 140, so this was a perfect alternative, and it worked out great. And since then, I've used it extensively over the years to shoot a wide variety of subject matter. And I can say with full confidence that the 90 is one of the most essential lenses in my Fuji kit these days. It's the lens that makes me say, where have you been all my life? I wish I had this thing 20 years ago. So let's dive in and check out the specifics of this lens. Optical construction of this lens consists of 11 elements in 8 groups, including 3 extra low dispersion elements, and special coatings on each element that help minimize chromatic aberration and distortion. And it's built with seven rounded aperture blades. It's just over four inches long, just under three inches wide, and it weighs 1.2 pounds, or 540 grams. With the lens hood attached, it's 5.75 inches, under six inches. That's pretty good, especially when you compare it to the 50 to 140. Which one of these would you rather carry all day? It has a very good working distance range. It'll focus down to two feet. And so effectively, it produces a maximum magnification of 0.3x when shooting close-ups. The lens feels really solid in your hands. It's got a numbered aperture ring that's pretty tight, so you're not going to accidentally bump it when you're out shooting. The focusing ring's pretty wide. It takes up almost the whole barrel. It's got a decent amount of friction to it. One of the first things you might notice when you pick the lens up and give it a shake, you'll feel like there's something loose inside, like something's broken. Not so. That's actually Fuji's quad-core linear motor that drives the autofocus system. The system operates within a series of four magnets inside the barrel. When you turn the camera on, the magnets engage and the lens becomes tight and it's ready for action. Let's go back to the lens hood for a little bit because it's actually a pretty important detail. It's not one of those bladed lens hoods that you'll find on some lenses, like on the 50 to 140 and the 18 to 135. The 90 has one of those full cylinder hoods like the 56 does, and this means you can rest the lens down on a flat surface upside down. Uh, like if you're changing lenses, or you're rooting around your camera bag for something, and you're trying to direct your models, or look for the light. That offers a high degree of security, and that's pretty important. It's the little things that matter. And as with most of Fuji's newer lenses, it's weather sealed. 
Uh, the Fuji 90 has seven gaskets inside the barrel that keep dust and moisture out. As I mentioned, the 90 uses Fuji's quad linear autofocus motor, and it's designed around four magnets, which allow for greater torque, ultra fast, near silent operation, and greatly reduce friction inside the barrel. As it was described to me by one of the Fuji engineers, it operates like a maglev train. Essentially, the focusing elements are levitating inside the barrel within that magnetic field. And as I told you, when the camera is turned on, those elements don't touch the sides of the barrel. They ride freely inside. To me, this seems like an ingenious application for this kind of technology. And in use, it's highly effective. Autofocus on the 90 is incredibly fast, and it works really well with Fuji's tracking algorithms inside their cameras. I've shot a wide variety of action, sports, people moving, wildlife, birds. It tracks really well in continuous autofocus mode, and with its fast f2 aperture, it lets in a lot of light, which helps the autofocus acquire and track your subjects better. Let's talk about image quality. The Fuji 90 f2 is one of the real gems in the X-Series camera system. In fact, people who use the 90 consider it to be one of the sharpest, if not the sharpest, of all the Fuji lenses. Most of the Fuji primes are really good, and this is no exception. It holds an incredible amount of detail. Images shot with a 90 are razor sharp, even when shooting distant subjects. And this is where lesser lenses start to fall off in quality. When you're looking through a lot of air and trying to nail that subject that's far away, it takes the right combination of glass quality, construction of the lens, and coatings on each element to give you that crystal clear, super high resolution, sharp, highly detailed image. This is what you get with a pro quality lens. And the Fuji 90 F2 is absolutely a pro quality lens in every sense. No matter what you're shooting or how far away, this 90 is gonna nail your subject with a razor sharp, nice crisp focus. Here's an example that shows you just how good it is when shooting distant subjects. When you come in close and you're shooting at short to medium distances, you get incredibly sharp subjects against beautiful, soft, creamy autofocus backgrounds and no vignetting. And again, that maximum aperture at f2 gives you nice, soft, shallow depth of field, and it also comes in handy when shooting in low light. Perhaps the only thing it's missing is stabilization, but most of the other Fuji primes don't have stabilization either. So it may not be your number one go-to lens when you're shooting a lot of subjects in low light, uh, but that fast aperture can make a difference. I've handheld the 90 down to about 1 20th of a second and gotten sharp photos. I've always loved using mid-length telephoto lenses, and I feel that this kind of focal length gives you a lot of flexibility for making creative and compelling compositions. A lens like this compresses the background nicely, but not so much that you can't get a good feel for what's going on in the rest of the environment back there. And they let you isolate your subject against that nice soft background, and this gives them a high degree of prominence in the frame. The use of selective focus and using varying levels of depth of field in your photos is one of the greatest creative techniques you have in the world of photography. And this allows you to bring your subjects together and form those relationships with the different elements in your frame, even if they're kind of far away from your subject. And that's the beauty of using long glass. And since it's a fixed lens, you get what you get. And I actually like this. That's why I love prime lenses. When you look through the scene, you have one view. And as you become more experienced, you'll learn what that view looks like. You'll learn what to expect when you put your eye to the camera. And that's one less thing to worry about when you're trying to compose your photos, especially if they're unfolding quickly. There's no time wasted trying to contemplate whether you should zoom in or zoom out on each subject. You have one view and you run with it and that's where you go. I like that. To me, there's something fundamentally cool about the simplicity of prime lenses. When you get to know a certain lens, uh, you instinctively know exactly what it's gonna look like when you put it up to your eye, how it's gonna render each kind of subject matter when you're shooting. And that becomes burned into your style and your creative vocabulary as a photographer. It's that whole limitation breeds creativity thing. The more you become an efficient technician with your gear, the more competent and confident you'll be as a shooter. Sure, there are times where that limitation can be a little bit inconvenient in some situations, but the trade-off is that you get the quality and the speed in a compact lens that's way smaller and lighter than the big pro zoom. During the past few years, I've shot a wide variety of subjects with my 90. Landscapes, portraits, action, travel, adventure, and in every case, I've been incredibly pleased with the results. In a situation where I wanna go lightweight with my kit, 
but I still want to get that long telephoto look. You know, that highly compressed background on distant subject matter and nice soft depth of field. The 90 is the one that's going to go with me. Pair a lens like this with a wide angle and you've got a great creative combo that gives you a lot of versatility and a lot of style when not a lot of weight. Don't get me wrong, this is not a replacement for my 50 to 140, but rather an additional tool that makes life a whole lot easier when I don't want to carry around the big glass. It's also a pretty good value. Considering the big jump in quality over a lens like the 18 and 135, it's surprising that the 90 only costs $50 more than that lens. And when Fuji runs their lens rebates, you can usually get it for $150 off the regular price. I remember back to when the 90 wasn't even out yet. It was still being talked about, and I'd seen the mock-ups at Photo Plus, and I remember thinking to myself, eh, that's probably not a lens I'm going to get. I've already got the 56, and I'm going to get the 50 to 140 when it comes out next year. How wrong I was. Now, I love both of those lenses, but the 90 focus is so much faster than the 56, and it's so much smaller and lighter than the 50 to 140. And the combination of size, weight, quality, and speed fits perfectly with my fast and light style of outdoor photography. So no matter what kind of photography subjects you like to shoot, the 90 can be an incredible, versatile, high-quality lens in your kit. And if you do decide to get the 90, please consider purchasing through the links below. Also, if you're a Fuji shooter, you'll definitely want to check out my best-selling ebook, X-Series Unlimited. It's considered to be the missing manual for the Fuji system. It's almost 400 pages of inspiration and information that'll help you get the most from your Fuji camera. So thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Consider leaving me a comment. You can check out my other videos as well. You can find me on social media and on Patreon at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can visit my website and blog as well. If you're already a subscriber, just want to say thank you very much for your support. So take care, have fun with your camera out there, and I'll see you next time.